This is the Stormy Willow Podcast, a light-hearted, balanced examination of the paranormal. Hello, Brood. Sarah here, along with... Adele. Hi, Adele. Hi, and welcome to the show. Um, hey, did you know that some say that our show is like Drunk History meets Are You Afraid of the Dark? No, who says that? I say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there and act like people are saying that. <laughs> well, I think that's great. I'm so honored because um, I love both. I'm a fangirl of both. So, yeah, I, I like that. We're going like to put it out there. That's what that's what they say about our show. You know, I think they are right. I think they are right. I yeah. love it. It's accurate to me. That's pretty awesome. That's some pretty good news. Yeah. Oh, news. <laughs> so Adele, do you remember a few weeks ago talking about gnomes? Of course I do. Okay. They were one of the elementals that represent Ex- Earth. Exactly. Well, there was a fun little article on Sky News um, that I wanted to share with you about gnomes. Okay. Let's, <laughs> now let's these see. um try to stump me. I'm I'm kind of an expert now. You're kind of expert, but um now this is specifically over Christmas gnomes, so I just wanna oh, let you know I'm out. the head. That's what the headline says. Um, But I just want you to know that um, gnomes being left in people's garden are actually, um, they actually reveal a sinister motive. And I'm going to tell you about it. So we're going to North Wales. Police say um, that they are aware of gnomes being in people's front gardens and what is thought to be a calling card for burglars. What? I don't understand that. North Wales police said it was aware of gnomes being left in people's front gardens in the Broughton area of Flintshire. Officers said that this behavior was sometimes used to see if the resident is at home, known as a so-called calling card. If the gnome is not collected by the resident, the property is likely to be empty and burglars could view it as an easy target. So basically these burglars, if they think you're not home, put a gnome in your yard. And if you don't go pick it up, they feel like you're not home and they try to go target your house to burgle. But people are so paranoid. What if they're like afraid of the gnome? Or well, So you're saying what? in an attempt to burgle people, they're giving them free gnomes? Yes, pretty sign, much. Sign pretty me much. up. Yeah. So, um, you know, just wanted to let you know if you uh, if you just see a gnome in your yard, you might want to pick, get make sure to pick it up because it could be the burglar uh, like staking out your house. Um, so I guess like if you do leave the house, I'm gonna start leaving that as a note for mom. But mom, if you see a gnome, please pick it up. <laughs> well, I'm not with town. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. That oh, so, um, never heard of that. That was from Sky News, um, but you also heard it here on Stormy Willow. Just you know, trying to make sure that you stay safe out there. Um, if you got any travel plans, just you know, if anybody's watching your house, make sure they look out for gnomes. Just add that to your checklist. Um, as an aside, this has nothing to do with gnomes, but it does have something to do with the elementals. Oh so, yeah, please, please. So remember how also one of the types of elementals are undens like the yes. people essentially yes. and we were like oh the undine like undine that's definitely undine. someone's name yes i went on facebook there oh. are tons of undines and uh, how do they spell it like u-n-d u-n-d-i-n-e but now would there be one in south carolina that spelled u-n-d-e-a-n like dean dean probably i didn't check multiple spellings but i know I found one, and this, she was exactly what I pictured, and it only oh. took like two seconds. Yeah, I'm not gonna say her name. Obviously, you know it's Undine, um, but I will just say all I saw was the name and her profile picture and location, and she was exactly what I thought. She was a grandma with an American flag in the picture and in Florida. Undine. Undine. There she is. I love me and Undine. Mm-hmm. You, I feel like you don't fuck around with the Undine. You, no. you fuck around to find out if your name is Undine. You, if you were raised with somebody named Undine, you probably got hit with a glass water for sure. 
Or, or I feel like that would be like the person our grandparents are talking about, and then they like show Undine. up and they're like, "Oh no, you look who pulled up in the drive. It's Undine. You kids better behave. She'll whoop you." <laughs> and then at that point, I would just go hide under their coffee table. <laughs> yeah, like Herman does. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, oh, okay. Oh, I'm just gonna hide. Undine. Wow, you were right. You were right. Yeah. Oh, speaking of an elemental, Undine the human, the she, elemental person. She's a force. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh my god, I love that so much. I yeah. love that. Well, um, so do you want to find out about your horoscope as we are, as September is rocking and rolling? It's not bad, I will say. It's not too bad, guys. Okay, yeah, let's hear about uh, the astrological forecast to see what, let's do what, it. what what the four corners blow our way this week. All right. Speaking of elements. Well, um, today's forecast comes from our friends at astrology.com. So you may be feeling like you're tying up loose ends before the official arrival of fall on September 23rd. I'm kind of feeling like that. Like, you know, summer's kind of lingering still and we're kind of getting ready for a new season. I'm slowly putting out the Halloween decorations. Um, But one thing to remember about September is that the sun is in the earth sign Virgo, which helps us to tie up loose ends and transition so it really makes sense that the sun is in this earth sign because we're basically transitioning from summer into fall and so hence while you may feel a transition you may feel that pull so virgo energy um is really big on focusing on details self-analysis and bringing order to daily life and so your september energy will pick up um, especially as next week as we head into uh, the new moon on September the 14th. And then we're going to have Mercury going direct in the same sign the next day, September 15th. So with these events overlapping, um, you could actually start seeing some sparks ignite in a good way for once. <laughs> All right. Um, this, new, this new moon energy will um, make you feel like trying and actually inviting new ideas and you're going to have more of a can do attitude with it. So instead of it just being an idea, you might be like, I can flip and do this new thing. So look for some new ideas coming your way next week and a, and a good attitude to boot to back it up. And so towards the end um, of next week, we're going to kind of be towards the halfway point already in September. You might want to also consider giving your brain and nervous system a rest because Virgo is all about achieving efficiency through balance. So not a bad horoscope, you know, like tidying up new ideas, can do attitude and giving that nice brain nervous system a rest. Cool. Sounds like we're I'll just tossing it. out summer and I'm fine with that. <laughs> I think a lot of people feel that way. I, I do love the summer and I really, really love the fall, but I hate the winter with a passion. So I am not looking forward to that. I'm not looking forward to losing my sunshine. I get real sad, which is so funny because I love all dark things. Yeah. I'm just, I, I'm just a light in Halloween. I, I'm basically like the light inside the pumpkin of Halloween town. Oh, there you go. That's me. And Calabar comes and takes it's it away. <laughs> I was thinking a beacon of, of still goodness. still my shy but... Calabar. Calabar. Calabash. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of Calabar, I'm wearing a really cool shirt. Um, I showed Adele at the beginning of the podcast. Let's see if you can see it. Yeah, it says, uh, get in losers. We're saving Halloween town. And it's like yeah. a taxi. Let's go. Yeah, it's Benny. It's Benny. And that has been Benny. I no, watched. that's Sandlot. <laughs> I haven't I haven't seen that since uh you were in high school, probably. No. <laughs> so which one? The Sandlot or Halloween Town or both? <laughs> Halloween Town. I usually okay. watch the Sandlot during the summer. I do love the Sandlot. It's um, a good summer movie. Listen, Sandlot is my uh, my um summer t-shirt collection. I never wore t-shirts, guys, as growing up as a kid. No, I was, you like, dressed like a 40-year-old attorney whenever you were, what, 
13. <laughs> I was very much like Fortune Beamster um, describes in her stand up when she was like talking power about wearing business power suits. I too, Fortune, um, did that. It must have been a Southern thing. <laughs> it must have been a Southern thing at the time. I it must have. Yes, yeah, Fortune and I are probably about the same age. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And so now that I am middle aged, um, I know you're like, what? You look so young. Thank you, Rude. Very kind. Um, but anyway, I have really, now I just love t-shirts. I love them so much. <laughs> and so I have a lot, like they don't even fit in my drawer. And I went bananas um, and bought so many more Halloween Town merch. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy to do. I do that with gadgets. I'm I like, mean, yes, I do need that 17th screwdriver. I feel like at this point in time like just find your joy like wherever you find it if it's in if it's in a flashlight or if it's in a halloween town t-shirt it does not matter whatever brings you happiness it's fine (laughs) it's fine you know what brings me happiness what like spooky stories yes how did you guess i could kind of sense a segue coming (laughs) well if you tuned in last week and maybe listen in order. I don't know. Anyway, I landed on presenter's choice. Yeah, you did. So naturally, what do you think I chose? A cryptid. Like, of course. Yes, I chose a cryptid. So submitted for the approval of the brood. My topic this week is the Fresno Nightcrawlers. Oh, yeah. Is the night crawlers oh like little things um yes so ha- what do you have you heard of these i have, have heard of these um of them? yes i have um i don't really know a lot about them um but i kind of think of like wormy i can kind of see that um, um really? and maybe that mm-hmm. go ahead go ahead yeah there's i think like the oddest looking creatures i've ever seen <laughs> like they're very weird looking um so just to kind of brief you if you n- are not yeah, like, with the night crawlers i don't know it's like a jelly fishy looking I, I don't even know like does it even have a body i i don't yeah. know so really like they look like pale white or maybe like gray walking pairs of pants like yeah pants or that's something. probably a good way to describe it i mean i guess i kind of think of a worm kind of like bent like a leg kind of like i can uh, see that kind of like they're acting they're, they're like like that taking a u or a v yeah and walking it's like a u human. it's like if you turned a worm yeah like if you just kind of like turned a worm into a frown and but it walked <laughs> That's yeah, what I have to say. Turn a worm into a frown, and you have a and you have a nightcrawler. Like that's pretty much how. That's actually a theory I have not heard that they maybe could be big worms. I don't know. Maybe you heard well, it first here on Stormy Willow. I gotta tell you that you know I love a spooky story, but I'm also here to solve mysteries, and I think I may have just solved it. Sorry to, to do that like 30 seconds in, but that's mm-hmm. what I think. Okay, it's so a worm. Well, I would say these would have to be really big worms, but hey, we can put that out there as a theory. Um, I mean, so- look at the look at Beetlejuice. Like he turned him himself into like a big snake, big sandworm thing. Yeah. Sandworm. Uh, I don't know. Maybe these are sandworms from Beetlejuice, but uh, yeah, I mean, they literally appear like almost like ghostly clumsy it's like they're okay pants. like God, it's we it's weird you if you are listening you should google it really quick just it was, yeah. it's very, it, i don't really can't think of anything that it's like yeah which is why i think it's caught the attention of so many because they are so bizarre looking yeah um, so they almost could be aliens they they're <laughs> any adult swim fans out there there was a show called assy mcgee and they look like Assy McGee, like, because oh, it's I'm just legs and a butt, and that's the character. Assy McGee? What? Assy McGee. That's instantly what I thought of. Um, um, I E or Y? Assy, like A S S Y. Okay. McGee. Oh my God. It's like a detective that's a butt. Like, 
that's it like that's pretty much it i can't Uh, deal but yes so these things are very odd looking um i've heard that in some sources that accounts could go back as far as the 90s but it seems that 2007 is agreed upon across sources 2007 wow 2007 was okay that was before the first financial crisis yeah back when they made a resurgence they see these things started walking they were just walking out (laughs) they were just like i'm leaving before the financial crisis just about to get real i can see the future i'm slowly walking my you know parachute walking my ass out out of here (laughs) yeah (laughs) so it was really 2007 and it just so happened to be surveillance footage that seemed to be what was the big thing that launched these things into kind of the limelight um but before we get into more of the details about sightings, theories, all that good stuff, let me uh, cite my sources. So I went to anymystery.com, allthatsinteresting.com, and ranker.com. I did yeah, check ranker. like several other sources, but it was pretty much the same story that everybody gotcha. seemed to be saying. Um, so yes, let's start with that Fresno sighting in 2007 hence the okay. name the fresno night crawlers that's obviously fresno california fresno. yes so fresno california i don't know much about the city it looked at me on the map like it's almost really in the middle of california like smack in it's the like middle near, is it near a military base hang on go no ahead Continue. i would it looked to me like the closest city was san jose but okay that that's about all i know about fresno um so yes i will share the footage too so if you are listening i don't know if you want to pop over to youtube but you could otherwise we'll also post pictures or you could just seriously google it it'll come up very quickly but anyway all right so fresno california 2007 uh nightcrawler footage was captured by a man named jose Uh, i don't know if that's his real name or like a pseudonym um but Jose apparently noticed his dogs barking on his property at night and he was like what on earth are they barking at Mm -hmm. so he installed a camera on his garage just to see like what's going on at night probably assuming it was wildlife or who knows right coyote god only knows what yeah yeah it seems like a natural response um, but surprisingly, he captured what looked like a big pair of white blousy pants walking across his front yard. And um, I'll, I'll share the footage now. Let me pull that up. Now, I was asking if there's a military base, and there is one in Fresno. Oh, okay. And so I'm wondering, could it be military? I don't, I mean, even, I don't know if our... anybody's thought about that. When we get into our um, stuff. Okay, original footage. All right, so here we go. This is on YouTube. I'll link it in the show notes as well. So as you can see, if you're watching, it's pretty grainy. But once these things start moving (gasps) around, they're still kind of... There it goes. Look at it. Right? It's like a pair of overalls with no body. It's so weird. It's casting a shadow. And then... You know, it's just kind of. Look at it go! It kind of looked like it had a head on one part, but I think it's just from the footage. Yeah. So I mean, these things are just kind of strolling. They're like not even in a hurry. They're just strolling across this guy's yard. Can you? Wow! Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So it's it's odd. These things are very odd looking. And he, you know, allegedly was very surprised to find these things. Uh, yeah, I, I would be like, you think you're going to see a wildlife and you're like, oh, what is that? Yeah. And he even said they moved in a way that he couldn't put into words, almost as if they were underwater. Um, hmm, there is yeah. something odd and almost like gravity defiant with the way these things move it's yeah, like it's, they float more than walk they're almost like a slinky yeah they're just the oddest moving thing it's very awkward it's almost like you're water walking yeah something. it's really bizarre 
Exactly. Um, so he was, you know, kind of freaked out by seeing these things. Yeah, okay. had no idea what they could be. Uh, so Jose and his family called the police. And they also were like, I have no idea what that is. Um, and they ended up just releasing the footage to like a news station and a paranormal investigator named Victor uh, Camacho, who is the host of Los Desvelados, which means the sleepless, the sleepless ones. Oh. Um, and they took a look at the footage and were like, we have no idea what this is. Like, you know, a news station you would think would have specialists that could look at it. Um, no idea what these creatures Everybody are. Everybody is like puzzled at this point. Mm-hmm. And then by once by this point, like now these things are getting out there, right? With media, social media, and kind of blowing up and really yeah. the spotlight. Um, but yeah, I mean, people who have reviewed the footage seem to be stumped by what they are. And uh, we'll get into later some experiments, but it does sound like the video has been authenticated by at least a few groups saying like yeah. it seems it's real, it's like it doesn't look actual. like he's edited the video in any way right right so it's truly odd um that was like the thing that really made it big and if you do think back to like the early 2000s like 2007 god that was like the heyday I feel like of social media. I feel like even since then, it kind of feels yeah. But I think back then, like, wasn't Facebook just at colleges then? Yeah, or starting MySpace. Just everybody, everybody was on MySpace. Yeah, and so yeah, it, I feel like it was really booming at yeah. that point. We're starting so, to really boom. Yeah, this thing just walked all over. <laughs> uh, or sorry, Ginger Glided. scrolled in its pants. <laughs> um, so that was 2007, and then it's kind of hard to tell. I'm kind of sticking with th – th there have been so many videos released and now sightings, but now it's kind of like, mm, is it a hoax? Is it a copycat? Is it just a joke at this point? Right. These were kind of the original ones that were – I don't know, that seem – that they have at least some sort of, like, credence or credibility. Yeah. Uh, so these – like like i'm not at all mentioning every sighting by any means <laughs> right um the next one was just like a few years later so not until 2011 that there was a sighting also called on camera with surveillance footage in yosemite national park in california wow okay so so far both of these are in california yes so Yosemite National uh, Park had installed, and like officials from there, had installed cameras. I think they were trying to catch people who were like trashing. Right. Park, like, you know, trespassing in some way. And uh, they ended up catching very, very similar footage, which I'll share as well. Um, it's the day I love it. You're like showing me live footage here. I know. I feel like live I'm for like, me because I've not seen it. So I feel like I'm a legit like anchor. I know we're gonna go live. Um, okay. Oh so, now this now these look more like a jump seat, like a jumper. <laughs> a romper. A, a, pant, a romper. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Here they come. Oh my god. Okay. Now this one makes me maybe because it's oh god. Yeah. And here comes another one. Oh, God. Yeah. So the fir okay. First video, right? There were two. So they do seem to be traveling in pairs. Maybe because the video was so grainy in the first one, it didn't seem quite as creepy. But for some reason, this one creeps me out a little more. I don't yeah, know why. The way they move is just so unnatural and weird. Like, they just look what? so unnatural. The... Adele. Yeah. Like, just... And the other one looks little. That too. Um, so I, to me, they look identical to Jose's video. Um, you know, some say that that in this video, they appear to be taller. To me, Jose's video, I can't really tell how far away the camera is and it's kind of grainy, but the general look and way they move, I think look really spot on, like identical. Yeah, they definitely move in the same fashion. Um, I just think you have a crisper view for yeah. the, the Yosemite one, just because the technology and, and whatnot is just a little more crisp. But it's definitely the same, to me, the same motion, same look. Very well could be the same beings. It's in close enough proximity, like... 
It yeah. might have taken them four years to walk there very slowly. <laughs> or it's Maybe they were on ones. vacation. <laughs> um, so I think that the discrepancy that that some skeptics are like, well, in the first ones, the, the figures looked more like they were about four feet tall. Mm. And the Yosemite, they're saying that one of them looks like six feet tall. I don't know if anybody's actually done a test. I would like to see that, like a six foot tall person stand in the same place, see like size wise, yeah. make a comparison. But I'm not really worried about the size. I have to be honest. Like it's, right. I'm worried about 10 million other things about this entity. <laughs> it's, it's, it's size. Yeah, right like, like who are they wearing? Yeah. I know that's what we're all at. <laughs> I'm like, I like this look. I like it. Yeah. They're just <laughs> trotting down the runway in the forest. Um <laughs> but um, I don't really have a problem with them being different heights because I mean, look at humans. We come in all sorts of right. different sizes. Yeah. Like I still think they look like they are the same species, if not the exact same figures. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, like, I don't think the height really matters as much. For yeah. Me. Um, so yeah, as I said, like since these sightings and just this getting so popular, there's been tons of other alleged sightings of course some of these are cop copycats hoaxers um, right. i think i think some of the big ones there's like one in poland and one in montana so these are starting to pop up in other places than california okay so like now we have reports like from all over the world how oh but now it's like out there and people psyche right so yeah like, is it really yeah 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 and of course i mean most people aren't walking around with a camera ready like you know, so the odds of getting good footage. This is a, a stupid question. Um, but obviously, like, okay, if we're, you're picking this up on security cameras, essentially, then technically you should be able to see it with your naked eye. Because they're not like a night vision, are well, they? Well, I don't know. That's also some theories out there. We can get into that. Okay. In theories and discussion. Okay. Because... I searched everywhere to try to find encounters, and I was coming up short. I couldn't find actual live encounters of these things. Okay. Um, the closest I got was on anymystery.com. There again, this is super vague. Um, just quote, according to one tale, a family encountered the creatures while camping in the Sierra Nevada mountains. A peculiar sluggish movement outside their tent woke them up in the middle of the night. When they looked around, they noticed two tall, slender creatures walking away from their encampment. They couldn't make out specific traits, but they did see the being's remarkable height and slender appearance, which matched accounts of nightcrawlers. Another sighting was claimed near Stockton, California, when a vehicle saw a tall, slender person crossing the road late at night. The figure moved in the same strange way as the things in the Fresno and Yosemite videos did. Now, that's still, I don't know. I'm kind of taking that with a grain of salt. Yeah. Um, and it's still more of a sighting, not an encounter. Right. So, but it does sound like these things are seen with the naked eye, at least in these two accounts. Yeah, it does. I think oh. that kind of rules out. Because there were some theories floating around with, like, why are they only on surveillance footage? Are mm -hmm. they visible to the naked eye? Mm -hmm. But I think if those stories are true, then yes. But we don't know if these stories are true. Right. <laughs> So many questions, so little answers. So many. Um, but yeah, this one I think will be a little bit more theory heavy. Um, because now that it's out there, everybody still to this day is like, what the heck are these things? Yeah, I want to know. Um, the mystery so, of the travel and pants. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so I'm just going to discuss some of the more popular ones. We can kind of dig into that, but yeah. there are tons of theories out there, guys. Um, let's start with the Native American theory. I think that's a big one. Let's start with the original folks. <laughs> yeah. Although this one, I, it still kind of raises my eyebrows. All right. So there are, there have been images, people starting to kind of internet sleuth on this, essentially, and there have been pictures posted of wooden monuments that look like these figures around the Fresno, California area. Okay. Um, now, some of the photos, it's kind of hard to tell the origin, but they're assumed to be like a totem kind of thing from maybe gotcha. some of the locals. Um, and these look oddly like the nightcrawler figures uh 
So I don't know. I just kind of have a hard time with the figures because we don't know for sure the origin. There, mm. I think I would physically have to go there and investigate this myself. <laughs> it's like almost what it's getting at. Yeah. It's kinda, uh, like trusting people's word. Like just because people even say these are from Fresno doesn't mean they actually are because it's just a picture on the that's internet. That's right. Right? So anyway, they're loosely, they're kind of tying this maybe to some Native American lore in the area so one of the hints is the totems um and you know like i said it lacks the precise date and origin of the sculptures so some people even speculate like what if it's just silly like art that the county did to make it look you know what i mean like we have stuff like that around here where it's like what does that have to do with that trying to what are like what if it's just like a decoration outside the dmv and it's not actually like a totem pole well, how could it move oh, no, no they're, they're just talking about the totems oh not the actual being so anyway like oh, what, okay. that's like linking it to the native american lore so i don't know some people seem to be more all about this theory but i'm still pretty skeptical um, but we'll get we'll get to where I'm going with this. So that's clue one is like, okay, maybe it's something tied to the Native Americans and whatever this thing is we're seeing in the totems. Right. Um, and look, there are these things in that area that a lot of the the tribes in the greater Fresno area do call quote unquote stick Indians. Um so these are like in their lore and these things um vary of course tribe to tribe just like all the other stuff we've talked about like skinwalkers and wendigo there's different tribal variations right right um so in some these stick indians actually sound more like bigfoot but in <laughs> others they do sound more like these figures they're like really really tall with really really long legs so they can walk through the mud really easily Okay. <clears throat> and supposedly these stick Indians are actually pretty dangerous, it sounds like, from the lore. Which I don't get that vibe at all from the surveillance footage. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the lore in Native American roots say that essentially these nightcrawler type beings, these stick Indians, <clears throat> have just always been there. Like, they aren't new. They've just always been there even before humans. Okay. So that's kind of like one theory that maybe it's these things from these Native American myths and it's just we're seeing them again and maybe they're evolving more too. And I, I don't know. That's one theory. Um, so they're long-legged, nocturnal, and the totems kind of resemble this, but I even question if the totems even represent any of this lore. Right. Like, I don't know. It's like, it's kind of hard to piece together. Yeah, I, I feel like this is kind of taking a stretch. And that's one thing I'm starting to realize with a lot of the paranormal stuff we do is I feel like it's almost a scapegoat. <laughs> it's either Babylonian or it's Native American. Like, <laughs> okay, sure. Like, you can really stretch anything to tie back to those things. It doesn't mean it's real or not. Right. But I don't know. That's one theory. Okay. Is that these things are, they've just always been here and they're a part of like Native American lore. They're creatures that are out there in the woods. Okay. Okay. And then another theory is that they're aliens. All right. Uh, this is what I want to hear. Okay. So, um, this is honestly just based off of how they look. Like, there's nothing, like, substantial. Obviously, like, we don't have a body. We don't have any actual physical encounters with these things either to go off right. of. So, just based on the appearance, some people are saying they look like they're not of Earth, which I agree. I would agree. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, there's even been some stretches to say that it almost looks like a fabric that they're wearing. Like, what do they really look like under that? Like, Oh, yeah. I don't know, could it be like a uniform that's protecting them from like I mean, yeah, like could it be like these are the uh these are the ones that actually go on the earth and like they have some like something protecting them, like armor. Yeah. Or like the, the armor armor of wearing. like a a surgery like suit. I don't know. Like yeah, a, a cover of some sort. Um 
and that they're probably just around here to scout. It looks, which yeah, I, they sure are just kind of strolling around. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's really it. it's like solely based on appearance. People think they could be aliens. Okay. Um, and then I would say the third big win is that it's just a hoax. Um, and this was actually tested on Fact or Faked that used to come on the Sci Fi channel. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I used to like that show. And they've also uh, featured these creatures on The Proof is Out There on the History channel, which yeah, I used to watch. That's a good one. Um, I, I didn't watch this or don't remember the specific episode of Fact or Faked, but they did a round of experiments to try to essentially be like, well, if it was a hoax, how would you do it? Yeah. And it's like they could do it, but they were like, it's pretty obviously a hoax, though. Like, it doesn't you look You just tell. It doesn't look like that. Yeah, so they kind of felt like their attempts at hoaxing it was a failure. So they, they seem to think more that the footage is authentic. Uh, oh, that's is, good news for them. Yeah, there is like an internet sleuth named like, I think his name's Captain Disillusion, but he also does bits where he's showing how this could easily be hoaxed, and he seems to really think it's a hoax, so it's kind of a mixed bag. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I feel like the time that this, uh, the first one came out, like in 2007, right? I feel like the internet was, like, maybe now you could do something fancy, you know, with your computer and do it. But I don't feel like you really could in 2008 as much as you could now. Yeah, well, that's, just... that's But then true. again, like, I'm not really the most computer savvy. So, like, maybe someone that's super savvy could have. But it just seems like now you might be able to easily, like, you know, do something. But it seems like in 2008. I mean, just look how grainy the video was even. You know, look how far yeah. we've come from that. So... Yeah. And I thought this was inter I thought it was interesting that fact or fake seemed to be more kind of stumped, whereas the proof is yeah. out there. They did an experiment with like a marionette puppet, essentially, and they were like, mm, we think that's close enough that we think it's a hoax. I so even with people like looking at the videos and actually trying to do experiments, it's still mixed reviews. Mm -hmm. on one, do they think the video is real? I don't remember proof. I don't remember if the proof is out there said if anything about the authenticity of the video. Right. Um, but it sounds like sources who confirm that they have looked into that think it's authentic. Yeah. Uh, so I'm like, okay, well that that's a step. Well, and especially at the park, right? At Yosemite, like, um, I like that's probably authentic to you. Yeah, I feel like that's a credible source. Yeah, like, I don't feel like it's. Yeah, I, I do because I mean, unless somebody was just like hey here's the security camera like let's do it here but i mean that would be really hard to yeah. do it's like how would you even know that they're putting yeah right there? like it just doesn't it just seems like it would be really difficult to um to do that pull off um but yeah i, I mean then it, there's even some theories that maybe they're ghosts um some yeah, folks I are saying they are a little GI. ghosty looking yeah so I don't know. I, I guess we can break it down now that you've also seen the footage. Um, I think the footage looks real, at least for these two videos. Yeah, I do too. Um, and I think that's what's so disconcerting about what you're seeing. Because I'm like, that doesn't look fake. <laughs> and I think, you know, it seems like the sources are credible to um, yeah. you. Know, it just... I don't know. It seems like, like the sources are credible in both of those videos. And it seems that, uh, yeah, they just seem very authentic. And I don't really know. I just don't know. Like, it's just, it's just so weird. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what it could be. And I think, and I did hear on like one other account, I feel like this is fake, but supposedly there was an Ohio encounter and this person allegedly collected droppings. <laughs> from these creatures Stop. but i feel like if that were yeah. true like <laughs> we would know about it somebody would have tested the droppings to see if it's you know or, flight, or what it is or, yeah i'm just i'm not buying that like these yeah. are the only two that i think seem credible uh, yeah um, 
I just don't know. Like, you know, when I first see it, like my first gut is, is definitely like alien encounter situation, but then I kind of get a ghosty vibe as well. Could it be ghost of an alien? (laughs) Could it be alien ghosts? Could it be ghosts that like passed here? (laughs) And like, that's what they're, they look like in the afterlife. Yeah. It's weird, guys. Like, I really don't know it's what they are. Really, bizarre. but it just and now. I mean, I don't know. Just like looking at these two things, but they don't seem harmful. I'm not saying let's right. go, meet them, but it seems like they really are just minding their own business, just kind of strolling along. Like, it doesn't really seem like they're harmful. Yeah. So, kind of like taking it back to the first theory with the Native American lore. I mean. My thing is, these do have a striking resemblance to what those totems are, but it bothers me that we don't know more about the origin of these totems. Yeah. So that's a problem I have with that theory. And interesting to know. And these, quote unquote, I I just don't like saying Indians. I feel like it sounds derogatory. So that's why I keep saying, quote unquote, these quote unquote stick Indians. Like, what is that? I mean, it could be anything from Big Bigfoot looking to this. I just think that's too broad. It's too broad. And if it's lore, it doesn't mean it's true. Yeah. You know, it's lore. Know. That's the whole point. It, it might just be a story. And to me, it sounds more like a cautionary tale of telling little children to not play in the woods at night. Right. Because something will snatch you. So I, I don't know. I, I feel like more of the internet is more in that camp of the stick Indians right i'm just not sold on that i'm not either i'm not either um aliens i feel like i don't know i remember when i first saw them i was like is it a cryptid or is it an alien was like my first thoughts i think there's something more other would it be a cryptid alien hey there you go (laughs) your world's just combined your two favorite things just combined and, and then, it's the night crawler <laughs> and then the universe implodes <laughs> like you're like oh. um i don't know i mean i guess it could be an alien just as much as anything else could be but yeah the the thing that's odd with that is these are never seen in relation to a craft so it's like where are they coming from do they just drop them here and they've just been here for years like die here and that's their ghost like we said earlier well, we know they didn't die in the Roswell crash, but was there was there a UFO crash in the Fresno area? Well, you know, now that the um the government has admitted to there being UFOs, this would be a great question. Oh yeah, let's just call up the government now. Let's just ask. The, now's the time. Now that every, all the all, everything's going to shit, but they'll answer this right now. I feel like so we have like, a shot. Oh my god, a question I, I can answer. Yes. <laughs> I will definitely, definitely give you the answer. Let, let me let's call Lindsey Graham real quick. I'm sure he would like to get out of the news. <laughs> right. Lindsay, um, we really need to talk about something very important. It's not about your, you know, your election fraud, but let's talk about the night crawler. What is it? Yeah. I thought you'd never ask. I can't talk about that now. When I die, <laughs> I'm gonna be free and I'm gonna become one. That crawler is actually really cool. We wear the same pants. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, is the, now uh, I'm just going to point out with everything going to shit right now. Now is the time to get the answers, guys. <laughs> now is well. the time. Shot in the fucking dark. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I just I don't know. There, it's just I'm not. I really don't even know what to compare them to because they are very uniquely their own thing. But I don't know what it is. And the hoax, like, I think the thing that bothers me as, as like a blanket statement, whenever people are trying to figure out if things are a hoax or not, I've even seen them do this with crop circles. Like they do it all the time, right? Trying to debunk things, which I agree with that. That's logical. Sure. But I think the the danger is just because you can reproduce it in a different way doesn't mean the thing doesn't really exist. So like, for instance, I'm pretty sure that if I had the right materials, the right camera, I could make something that looks like a tiger and you would believe it's a tiger. But just because it's not a tiger doesn't mean tigers don't really exist. Very true. That's so, very well stated, Bill. I mean, that's what kind of bothers me about this hoax thing. Yeah, I think this would be the easiest thing to hoax, but I just don't think those are hoaxes in those first I don't two videos. Either. 
I really don't. Um, they just seem to, like you said, I just, I, they just seem too real to me. And I feel like the sources are authentic and like, and what would be the point of the hoax? I asked myself to that them? too. And then I was like, who would do something like this? And then I was like, like what's the laugh or the, the I would game. do something like this. But <laughs> it's like, but why would you be like, just think about it. Like yeah. to make up a thing. I mean, is it just to see if you can get it in the media and just see how many yeah, people? You, I, I mean, I don't know like, what what the real point would be. I, I mean, I feel like I would potentially try something like that, but then I think I would come out and be like, I just wanted to see if it could get. Like, yeah. I, I wouldn't let people just sit in mystery. I just like I just wanted to see if it would catch on. <laughs> it's just weird. I mean, I don't know. And just how odd they look. I mean, if they are fake, someone was really creative. Like, I would never sure. ever think to create a hoax that looks like that. No, no. It's, it, just, it's just too odd. I just feel like a non-human mind would think of something like that. Like, it just, it looks, am I, I mean. I Is it an alien hoax? <laughs> That's what planet Earth is. <laughs> that's what, that's it's like come on guys come on really we got enough just kidding we're all just traveling pants around the universe oh my gosh it's like yeah. really really yeah i you know i keep leaning towards towards alien and i keep leaning towards it's its own thing or a ghost yeah there is something so ghostly about them but mm -hmm. after like reviewing this looking at theories i think they're aliens personally. i can definitely just see a that. gut feeling mm -hmm. honestly that was my first gut feeling if if i found out tomorrow they were ghosts i would be okay with that too yeah i just there's i don't know like these two particular videos i'm just like well especially like the way they move to me makes it seem ghostly or alien like it's very odd yeah so i don't know i'm um, gonna leave this one up to the brood what do you guys think brood, what do you think tell tell alexis and i also wanted to and i meant to say this at the top of the hour i'm so sorry alexis we had a birthday this week our our yeah. amazing alexis she has really i mean she's killing it on social so we really yeah. appreciate her and hope she had a great birthday week and um you guys you guys tell her what you think yeah, seriously. I, I was I don't know. I, I was scrolling on Instagram today, which I'm not on it very often. And I was like, oh, that looks good. Now oh, thanks to it's, Alexis. <laughs> it's like that's Stormy Willow. <laughs> I, know. I know, same. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is great. So <laughs> Yeah, yes. so yes. happy, happy birthday. Absolutely. And y'all I don't know what this is. I don't know. But I don't feel like I'd be scared if I saw one. I got to be honest. I don't feel scared of it. I don't either. I mean, I might be a little like taken aback, but I don't think I, I don't feel like it's sinister. I, I don't get a sinister vibe. I feel like they're just doing their thing. Whatever. It, 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 it almost just seems like, you know, balloons when they start to get deflated and kind of like flop around on the floor. Yeah. And the aliens <laughs> like running on my head. Yeah. I feel like they're just kind of like that. Like oh, it's, it's like a big animal balloon, like, you know, the long balloon, and you can turn it, and it's just yeah. Like, so it's just weird. It reminds me know. of that episode of It's Always Sunny when Charlie's like pants, 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 or wait, or is it butt, 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 butt? You know, I don't that remember episode? that episode. Oh, never mind. He does that with his butt, and so it just reminds me of like Assy McGee, <laughs> Assy McGee, or Charlie Day. <laughs> One of the same. Yeah, I. One of the same. I don't know. It's kind of a short weird episode, Adele. but I had to I had to do a cryptid. <laughs> I knew you were going to. Adele had another plan. Yeah. Um, but it's gonna that her other one might be a two-parter because it's gonna be really yeah. deep. So it's gonna be yeah. good. She decided to be like, I'm not doing that today. <laughs> it's gonna take a while to research. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. liked it. Oh, but very, very, very creepy, but I'm not frightened. Yeah, oh. and these, now these things are like super into pop culture too. Like you see them pop up in cartoons. They're, you can get all sorts of merch. Like I was about to say, they probably have a squishable. My little Kripkin that was a Nightcrawler. Oh, but he has uh, a head. 
Yeah, well, they made him cute, but he doesn't have any arms. Yeah. They also gave yeah. him like, a cute little, uh, yeah. But they made them all like cute versions. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, you can get like just tons of stuff. There's like memes, all sorts. I just have to talk about how much I just love the paranormal merch. I'm I'm a merch freak. I'm a I'm a merch hoe, all the way. Oh, I know. Filling up that little house full of Halloween, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Steven, you need to clear all this junk out for my Halloween shit. <laughs> You're right. I'm not even going to deny that because it's true. You have the van, Steven. I get the little house, the little bitch's house. <laughs> You're not wrong, Adele. I feel like I'm going to like come visit in the next year or so, and you're going to have converted that into like a witch shack. <laughs> Oh, I would love to. So uh, Adele's talking about the house that um, I live in. Um, we have like a little, literally a little house in the back and it, it needs to be renovated. We want to make it into like a extra space, but it just ends up collecting all of our stuff. <laughs> Stephen and I are pack rats. And so the joke is like, I'm always on Stephen's ass about how much shit he has, but in all actuality, I have just as much. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> But he's the one I label as the pack rat, not me. And so um, I have a lot of Halloween stuff. And so I talked about turning that house into like a little like haunted house or something. <laughs> all that stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so yeah, there's that. Cool. <laughs> well, yeah, that's all I have guys. That, those that's are the good. first night crawlers tell us talk to alexis about about it rude like what i want to know what your theories are yeah. um because i don't know it's a weird one yeah or if you're listening i'll post the question below if we'll write in if, or if what you, you had think. a freaking encounter i would love to hear um someone yes of these things me too because i mean just maybe it's the way they're moving and i'm being deceived but they seem just very chill just like what's up dude yeah like doing my thing i feel like if i had been camping in yosemite and those things walked by my campsite i'd have been like mm, well that just happened yeah I, but would you like a marshmallow yeah like okay <laughs> yes yeah. i would feel safer with those things in my campsite than a lot of humans then i would feel safer yeah i would feel safer camping with the fresno nightcrawler versus most human beings i'm just gonna say that <laughs> mm. i'm fine fine oh that was a good one adele it was a fun, light little episode. I like it. It was really good. Yeah. But uh, shall we spin? The yes, we shall. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Let's see what on earth next week. What on earth? Well, I, well, we land on. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Ghost. <laughs> you know, I love a ghost. That will be a great story, and it's right in time for spooky season around the it corner. It is. It spooky season is here, my friends, and I am just so happy about it. And I'm just, I want to do. I do want to say, I can't believe how many people already have their Halloween stuff up. Usually, I am always the first one, and I'm not this year. I think people it brings them joy, and they are like, "Let's do this." I think this Halloween is going to be like off the off the chain. Like I think everybody's just so air. ready to celebrate something and have some sort of fun and for it to not be freaking hot and on fire. Yes. Like I think I think people are ready. They're ready everybody's to ready. School. Um so I'm doing this really fun thing next weekend. Uh you know that show Three's Company? Yeah, of course. The Regal You know Bingo. Miss Yeah, you know Miss Roper? Yeah, I always wear moomoos. Yeah, we're doing a Roper um, romp where we wear moo's and the wigs and go from to brewery to brewery. That's really specific and random, but it sounds like fun. <laughs> it's a big thing. I have to check it out on TikTok. Hey, but the, the true question, whenever you yeah. talk to all these people there, is who was the better landlord? The Furleys, Mr. Furley, or the Ropers? Oh, what do you think? I always liked the Ropers better. Yeah. Like, oh, I kick it old school. I mean, I, I love, isn't it Don Knotts? That was part yes. Of that. Yeah, yes. I love Don Knotts. Uh, so I do like Mr. Furley, but I don't know. Something about the Ropers, especially the Moo Moo. Yeah. I mean, and I'm looking for, I mean, any chance to get in a Moo Moo. Yeah, I'm there. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding? Moo Moo's the perfect drinking outfit. I think, <laughs> isn't it like the perfect anything outfit? 
it really is it really i love it i can't wait well, maybe we'll see some walking moo moos <laughs> on surveillance footage that'll it'll be, be me. interesting it'll be me and then we'll probably. realize it's just pants on a quest for an outfit <laughs> but i just can't find a perfect top okay <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Oh my gosh. Adele, it was such a cute story. I really enjoyed it. And as we say here on our lovely, lovely podcast, stay safe out there, friends. Stay curious. And never trust the living. living. Bye, Scary Scary later. <laughs> <laughs>